All right, so Duffer, um, toys, well, granddaughter's toys anyway. Uh, well, three granddaughters, and this is the last one. This is the flying banana version. This is the yellow uh, Kazuma Meerkat style quad. It, I'm not sure it is a Kazuma because it hasn't got Kazuma written on it, but we've got all the plastics and we bought it cheap because um, they're going to play bumper quads with them, aren't they? You know, they're only, what, uh, six, four, and 18 months. So Riley won't be riding this without somebody on it with her, but the other two can now ride. Um, so I bought this cheap and I sorted it out. And you just think people are such liars. It doesn't bother, to, bother me because I'll fix it. But buyer beware. He done the, apparently the rear wheel bearings. But I don't know whether you can see the camera picked that up if you look down the chain line. That the sprocket's in the wrong place. There's a spacer missing. The sprocket should be there. With a spacer in that hole there. That's not a problem. I'll just turn one up on the lathe. But if you don't know that, you've now got to get a spacer. Or people bring this sort of thing to me and say, can you get it going? And you won't like the bill. So be very careful what you buy. Um, this, the CDI was missing. Apparently they'd had it running, but without a CDI, you're going to have a hell of a job. Um, I had a CDI kicking around, and apparently the dog chewed loads of it. But um, I have had it going pop, pop, which is my, it's got a compression and a spark with a CDI, funny that. Um, so I will try and get it to spin up and see if she'll go. So, all right. There you go, so it's gonna run. And that's the important thing, got compression, got spark, it will go. So I'm now gonna sort this bird's nest of wiring. Now we seem to have, I don't know if you can pick it up. Um, we have part of an original loom, that in there. But then Mr. Insulation Tape and Twisty Wires has been in here. Um, and wires are cut and yeah, I'm assuming that was probably a safety switch judging by the color of that wire. Um, yeah, which again, no big deal. I uh, need some gaskets on the car, but somebody's been in there with dirt, it looks like a bit of fag packet. Um, if anybody can actually afford to buy fags and use the packets to make gaskets out of. So what we're gonna do, have a bit of a jiggle around and set up, um, and then I'm gonna try and go through this and try and show you what some of the wires do, which might give you a bit of a clue when you're doing one yourself. They're not mega difficult, these things. So back in a minute. Right, much time later, um, made a new loom, the, the bird's nest that was on here, I'm not convinced it was original, and this switch certainly is wrong, so, um, and it's broken, so we'll get a new one. But basically, made a new loom, it's all done up with cloth tape, all new connectors, uh, the battery will sit in that hole there somewhere, the battery connection's there, um, go in there. I've got to weld a couple of little tangs on here to hold the starter solenoid and the CDI unit. They were originally buried down here near the exhaust and the back of the crankcase. Um, so then they're, they will be there now where I can get at them if they fail uh, without taking the whole thing to bits. So that electric's pretty much done. If you short those two together, it cranks over and starts. And if you short those two together, it stops. I'm not gonna finish this bit until I get the new switch for it. And then obviously I can terminate it to plug in here correctly. Um, so it works now and it's running. So that's it for the electrics. The next job is obviously sort out my, um, my spacer to work out <laughs> what we're quite going on down here. Um, so the moral of the story is, don't believe what you were told by said people selling things on Evil Bay. I knew this was heap of junk, so it doesn't bother me and I'll fix it. But, you know, beware, you could end up spending a lot of money. And if you bring something like this to me, I'll fix it. But that's probably taken me three or four hours to make that and get it all working so it gets expensive so um we will come back a bit later on when i'm sort of right i thought before i did a spacer which i'll do in the machine shop i'll see if i've got a bit of stainless so i can make that out of i thought just for giggles should we see if the rear brake works it all seems to be attached and i've cleared the bleed nipple i blew the sawdust or you know the white powder you get out of there um out hang on make sure that is that i've got to open the new one let's just chuck some fluid in it and see what the hell happens you know, why not? Yeah, I didn't need to open a new one. Uh, why does it always do that? Right, so it's just, it may not work, we might have to reverse bleed it, or it might need a new master. So, um, but whatever, let's just see what happens.
We've got bubbles. Let's see what happens. Right. It's uh I need a spanner, that's what I need. Eight mil spanner. No one eight. I don't actually want to work. No, I'm a stupid boy. Right. Let's uh let's see if we can um Well, the fluid's going down, so um, that's a good sign. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely going down. Beauty of doing bikes like this, you can do it yourself. Without having to go down, up. Like we do when we're doing cars, right? Somebody put a wood screw in one of the um, screws that holds the top on, which is always good. Well, it keeps going down. Oh yeah, look, we've got fluid coming out. That's being picked up on the camera there, but we've got fluid coming out. Uh, it's not very clean fluid, I must admit. Yeah. Yeah, I can feel the caliper trying to work. Yeah. Let's see if it'll bleed up. It's just getting all the air out. But yeah, the caliper's definitely doing stuff. I'm not sure this actual brake assembly is for this bike, but um, if we can make it work, that'll do. And we've got fluid coming out that end that's clean. Yeah, I think the master's shot. No great surprise there. Ooh, the man might come back to life. Granddad will have to be the last of the big spenders and buy another one, will he? Yeah. Considering the amount of corrosion that was in there, I'm amazed it's doing actually anything. Yeah, it's um. Yeah, I think that might not be very happy. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's leaking out the front of the master. We need a new master. Right then, back on the granddaughter's quad. I uh, made the two spaces to stop the axle going sideways. Why on earth the person said he'd done the wheel bearings and not put the spaces back, heaven only knows. Anyway, so now the chain is in line, marvellous. Had to put new brake pads in there because there's only one. Uh, and we bled it, my master's shot, but it does work. So we'll get a master. I am going to, um, because we put new grips on, I'm going to make this master, when it's in, it will sit off set up here and I'll put a dog leg lever on it so that it's easy for Little to grab hold of it. As it is at the moment, um, this just won't work, it's just junk, you know, it really is. So that's all done. Uh, electric's done, got the new switch in, don't need the ignition key, one less thing to lose. Uh, so when the battery's on it, you just press the button, it fires up. Um, somebody's put a new carburetor on this. And these things snap manifolds. They, the, car, the original carbs hit the frame when they bounce and they snap the manifold. And I've got one here I, I welded up. This is one that obviously we ended up changing everything. But this is an original one for one of these bikes. And we end up welding it in here, welding it where it snaps and then put a gusset at the back. And it's all very well putting a bigger carb on it. But if that hole is the same size as you started with, it won't make a solid worth of difference because it can only suck so much uh, air fuel mix through that hole. So I have a, a different style, but it won't work because it's 
not as short, it's too short, but this has a much larger diameter hole and the bore cross-sectional uh, dimensions of the bore is bigger. So that would work better with a bigger car. But you people think stick a bigger car right on it, it'll go better. Not if it's strangled body inlet manifold. Completely pointless. So um, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna undo the bolts, take the carb off. What I'm, I don't know whether you can see with the camera. Um, basically, this choke lever is jammed solid against the frame. It, 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 that's not going to work. And there's a lot of plastic on here, so I'm, to put the carb out here would be better, but with the plastics on. So what I'm going to do is take it off. I'm going to modify this handle so it'll come up round. So it, one, it doesn't hit the frame, to, and then therefore break something. We're going to use that manifold anyway. Um, so you can actually choke it to start it. And these have a habit. There's a slide in there that comes up and down when you on the choke, and it's held on with a little pip, and the pip breaks off, and then the, the choke slide falls down and chokes them. It's great when you start it, you don't notice, and you get five, ten minutes in, engine warms up, and it just chokes out. And that's what happens to them. Um, it's a really crap design. I don't know why they use these carburetors. But anyway, that's what we're going to do next. Um, my heat is about to go out, so I've got to sort that out. But we'll whip this off quick, and um, I'll show you what I'm going to do with the carburetor. So don't go away. Right, got the carb off. Um, on here, they have an O-ring on the carb, this side. And then this, this plate is designed to stop heat transfer from the engine getting to the carb. Obviously, it gets there because of general radiation of heat, but this is direct transfer. That's why these spaces are here. Nothing more to block the heat transfer. But there's an O-ring, you can barely see it a bit on the camera, on this plate, but it's so flat that it wouldn't seal at all. So you're gonna end up with a lean mix if it runs at all. Now if I do that, the choke comes on, I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but like that, open, close, and close. And that's the bit that falls off. But if you look on here, that has been rubbing against the frame already. Uh, uh, words fail me. Um, so even if you dispense with the choke in its entirety uh, and just choke the intake to get it going, you need to get rid of this bit. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this um, and adjust the handle a bit so it sits in, I don't know if it's picking up on the camera, it'll end up sitting in here because we go upwards to operate the choke. So as long as it comes down and out, then I can lift it and it will go up and it will then miss the frame. It's a bit of a faff to do it, but th th this is just the wrong carb for this, and I've never got round to working out what else to put in it. Um, and we'll change the manifold, because somebody's got a cornflakes packet, gasket, in here. It's just utter crap. Um, as I say, none of this bothers me. I bought it because it was junk, just to show you what you guys are buying, not knowing what you're buying. And they'll give you all the spiel and, and nonsense under the sun. Oh, yeah, it's a good quad. Yeah, I've used it the other day. Yada, yada, yada. And it's not. It's heap of junk. Um, so that's where we are with that. So we're on the boy to death. Uh, I'll get all this done and we'll come back. I'm also going to do the valve clearances. It's much easier to do the intake and that when it's a part like this. Um, and I'll show you how to do it. And I do it a really, really straightforward, simple way uh, because that's how to do it. it. There's just such a faff when they're in these frames, these engines, to do it. I do it by feel. And everybody's going to go, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, trust me, it works. So, um, I'll get this choke sorted out and we'll come back again once I've doctored it and hopefully that will then fix it and we'll find an O-ring for that um, heat plate. Right. right, I know it looks a bit Heath Robinson, but we've sort of bent it round. I could have cut it and TIG welded, but I just got brutal with it and bent it. But that now won't hit and it doesn't hit the frame, which is the important thing because, and it obviously lifts the choke up and down. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but um, you should be able to see that the choke goes up and down. Fine. Um, we also found, when we took that manifold off, because I put a um, welded up one on, that's the gasket. The camera picks that up all right. That would suck air straight through that hole. That wasn't, and there's loads of snot and shit bunging it up. So all for the, the sake of the bigger carburetor, he's got a bunged up manifold that's restricted anyway, and it's got an air leak. Yeah, that's gonna work. Um, <laughs> it's beggar's belief. Anyway, <clears throat> we're gonna put this back together and um, we washed out the air filter because it was filthy. Fil 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 filthy. Get us back together and then we'll get on to valve clearances. So we'll just get this wop back together a bit quick and then we'll come back. All right. Uh, last little bit really. Got the carb on. Uh, just on the valve clearances as per usual. 
no clearance at all they never do have none of these pit bike engines or quad bike engines anything with this honda-esque style even some of the cg chinese cg copy never got the right valve clearances anyway um i'll show you how to do it. i'll turn on my action cam here because it's just awkward to get this in to so you'll be able to see but um basically you need to turn the engine over on the uh crank here with a, a socket so and watch the valves go up and down on the intake stroke you know you're getting close uh so follow it through valve goes down comes back up and you're coming up on the compression stroke and there's a zero i don't know whether this will pick it up it is very awkward to see um in here and you just line the zero up in the middle of this hole and that's top dead center uh, compression stroke and then i literally um put that down over there you can't get the tool in for adjusting these it's a nine mil spanner um, and a little square drive and you just cannot get in there to adjust them so i use a nine mil spanner rather than a proper tool and a pair of long nose pliers and i literally adjust these so i can feel a very small amount of clearance um, just literally rock it backwards and forwards I know a lot of you can say, oh, no, 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 she's feasible gauge. Yeah, you would do normally, but you can't get in there. So this is the way I do it, and it works. And I've never had any problems at all. And they don't rattle and bang and clack either. So that's how I do them. And hopefully, if your engine's oil pump is working, I'll bring this up, you should end up, when you take the cap out, if it's been sat, oil won't run out, but you should end up with oil in the end cap, which generally means there's oil going up the top of the engine, which is always a bonus. Um, you know, it can be a bit of a disaster if not. So basically, I'll pop these caps back in. Battery is a new dead as a dodo one. I've had it kicking around. So um, I think that'll be going in the bin and we're gonna have to buy a whole host of new batteries. Now, the jury's out on, do you put Tamiya RC car connectors on so you can plug in a battery saver type charger to um, keep them alive when they're not in use? Or do you, just buy new batteries every year and don't worry about it you know the cost of electricity these days um you do wonder don't you? which is the cheapest option uh on my obviously on my bigger bikes and the batteries are like 50 quid a pop i do have a battery saver and generally i ride all year anyway so it doesn't matter it's only this year i haven't because i'm next time i tax it it's exempt um so hence i haven't bothered to tax it for this winter riding so um let's get the start pack uh, and let's just go for it. Let's see what's going to happen. Um, it'll either go brum brum or it won't. So, um, on a screwdriver to set up. Let's just set the idle mixture somewhere kind of sort of. Let's kind of wind him in. Don't go mad with this because you break it off. That's right in. I normally set them about one and a half out. So it's half, one, half. Somewhere there I do. That'll do to see if it's going to gonna fire up. So let's um, put the old start pack on it. This is a little bit more convenient than using a dirty great big set of jump leads um, on something this small. These are a bit weird, these things. This is a little special and it bleeps at you and does all kinds of weird things. So let's, um, if I can get it running, I want to change the oil. So, um, let me another job done. Right, let's just give it a go. Okay, right. Bit of choke. And. Whether well, it's going to run or not. Yeah, these are weird as. And the only way to stop it is to unplug it start again which is incredibly bleeding irritating uh, so I might have to get the big battery out in a minute and let's choke it off and it just stops turning over which is considered really really irritating. right got the big battery hooked up charging circuit seems to be working Carburetor is awful, even though I've washed it out and blown it out, and it looks fairly new. It's it's just 
just horrible. You can't. You have to, it, it, yeah, it's just horrible. Um, and the fact that somebody had been in there moving the needle around on the main slide is usually bad news that somebody's been messing. So, uh, you know, there's something wrong. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna junk that carb and get another one. So I'll, this video's probably getting long enough for now. So we're gonna do a part two. I'll get another carb, we'll order the brake master and I've gotta make the missing bit of foot plate here so my granddaughter doesn't stick a daisy in the um in the wheels but i mean all the gears work the engine will stay going long enough but it, i've had it running through the gears so engine's a bit ticky and it's not top end ticky uh, but you know it's fine for the kids to whiz around under the blows up and put another engine in it but that car breath is horrible um and they just you can hear it gone uh, Yeah, I'm not going to mess about with it, just mess the starter up. Um, so yeah, it will run and it's not leaving smoke signals and not knocking like a machine gun. So I think we've got something usable. So yeah, we'll call that it for this video. We'll do part two and do the other bits as I say. So thanks for watching um, and we'll see you in the next one.